Hello everyone. Well, it's been a while since I've seen you guys here. Uh, today, we're going to be doing something a little bit different. I am an HVAC service technician at heart. That's my job. So today, we're going to have an HVAC tutorial. Now, a lot of times, we have to braise copper lines together. And I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. And when you braise copper lines together, they always want you to run nitrogen or some kind of inert gas through it. Because if you don't, copper oxides will form on the inside of the tubing. So what if you don't have access to nitrogen? I mean, what if, you, what if you're like, kind of like a DIYer and you don't have it, you can't get it? Or what if you're on a job and you have it, but you're out of nitrogen? Well, today I'm going to show you brazing without nitrogen. And I'm going to show you a couple different tricks here. And I'm going to show you the results of these things, exactly what happens. So stay tuned. All right, so as you can see, He's cutting this tubing, and what we're going to do, once we get this tubing cut, we're going to swage it out, and then we're going to show you us brazing it together. And this is 3 8 copper tubing, and when you install an air conditioner, or any professional installs an air conditioner, uh, normally the liquid line is this 3 8 copper tubing, and this either has to be soldered together or brazed together. Alright, so we've got this tubing, and as you can see, one end of it's been swaged out and we're going to braise it onto this. Now like I said, normally if we were going to do this they would want us to have some kind of gas flowing through it to prevent copper oxide flakes forming inside. Now if you've never seen those before, we're going to show you the results of braising it uh, without any gas flowing through it. But I want to show you this method that I've come up with um, and we're going to try it out today, the theory here. Now my theory is quite simple, and it seems to work. You get two wet rags, and I do mean wet, I don't mean damp, I mean wet. And you put them about one inch away from the braze joint, on either side of the braze joint. So we got one there, and we would have another one here. That might need to be swaged a little bit better or tapped on, but anyways, I think you get the point. Just two rags on either side of the braze joint, about an inch apart. And we're going to try this theory today, and we're going to show you the results of it. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but if you can, when you have a, a flame like this, this is an acetylene air flame, and the inner blue cone of the flame, you don't want to touch that to the pipe. If you, if you touch the inner blue cone to the pipe, then that'll actually, it's like a carburizing flame, and there'll be a layer of carbon building up, and then the brazing rods won't stick. So it looks like he's starting to get it to flow now. He likes to get it smooth and not lumpy, which is good. Alright, so now this is what I like to do. This is my method. You don't want to pull the rags off just yet. And so you got to be very cautious in doing this, but this is just my method. You want to cool the pipe down as quickly as you can after you're done brazing. So you got to very carefully take your rag, just the end of the rag here, and be very careful not to touch the pipe with your hands. But just take the wet rag and just kind of cool it down. Now we can take it off and we can see how it looks. And as you can see, that's not all burnt and black on the ends here. And you did a really good job. It looks really, really good. I'm impressed. He said he could do it better than me. I think he wasn't kidding. So let's take it out and we're going to take a look down inside of it. All right, guys, now I'm going to give it a go and see if I can do anything. Let's see how this works out.
same as before. Just cool it down a little bit carefully. Okay guys, this one's going to get absolutely fried. We're not going to use any cloths or rags or anything on it. We're going to show you how badly this turns out with no nitrogen, no cloths, nothing. We're just going to cook it. Okay, so these ones, we're going to sand, and my theory is the copper oxide on the surface of this tube is actually being deposited inside. I don't know if this is true or not, we're going to try it. And I think I'm going to put the rags a little bit further back. Seems like it's taking a little bit too long for it to heat up. Want me to do it? Yeah, you can do it. I'm just going to put them a little bit further back. And we'll see. Alright guys, so it looks like that's the secret formula. If you're going to braise and you don't have nitrogen, what you want to do is put some rags on either side of your braise joint and about probably a little bit more than an inch away because we had some difficulties there heating it up when they were too close to the braise joint. But other than that, um, it looks pretty good. It's got to be clean. It's got to be clean. You sand the outside and sand the inside of your braze joint and put some, put some wet rags on either side of the braze joint and maybe a little bit further, maybe like one and a half or two inches away from the braze joint and that probably won't eliminate absolutely all the copper oxide flakes but I'd say that would do the vast majority of them so I do have some videos planned I don't know if they'll come out the way I planned but we're gonna try okay so Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next one.